enslaving these African because enslaving these African colonies for centuries isn't enough. When these Africans say that we've had enough of you, that isn't enough. They still have to send their ops, their secret ops, right, into Niger to do what? To overthrow the military government which the people are backing. This is how they are. This is their history. So when when they when they say independence, they don't really mean independence. This is something that they use for political expediency in order to make sure that the people are still under their thumb. So now they just change language but and and modify the tactics to keep the people enslaved. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and and our enemies. And that's why in a lot of African countries at that point is when they make this concept of a government, right? And then they make you, you know, they, they you, 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 you become uh, politicians and whatever and mm. all of that. And a lot of them are ex-military from France, from England, from whatever. Do you get what I'm saying? In the, especially in the 70s and 60s and, you know, when we were yeah. getting our independence. And, and this, so. this, my, this when we say, what, what, do, what do these these European countries, what do they export? What does America export? They only export Nothing. democracy. Still. They export oh, democracy please. and they export yeah. military in intervention. This system, that, this, this system that was set up after World War II, when you look at the, the, the World Bank, when you look at the IMF, when you look yeah. at USAID, yeah. these financial institutions have one goal and one goal only and that is to in debt yeah, these yeah. so-called third world nations mm -hmm. to keep them perpetually in a state of financial slavery That's so now right. we're looking at two africas today today we're looking at two africas we're looking at the yeah. africa that is like tunisia you know, the sell out, the pure sell out, the wannabe with zaddy in them, you know, want to be, you know, bowing down to colonial pa power. Yeah, like Egypt, like Egypt. Yeah, Captain. Yes, yes. So you have, you have the, you know, yeah. look what the Tunisian, yes. you know, the, this Tunisian president, he's such a devil, okay? Yeah. Right? He, he's, he's a real demon, like truly, truly a demon, right? Yeah, like he comes out like a few months ago talking about, you know, we got to kick out the black Africans in Tunisia because they're affecting our Islamic Arab identity. He said this, okay? Where did he get this from? He got it from who? Who was speaking like this like for the last since Trump came in power? It was France, it was the what's the Italian president president prime minister's name? Oh, lady. oh. Me too. I forget his name, you know, but okay, yeah. It's I mean, a lady. It's Benito. Lady. Benito. You know, Macron is nice saying this, female, no? the, the Italians are saying this, he is using this great replacement theory in, he has to be the first and the only one to do that in Africa yes, today, true. right? Mm -hmm. And last week or the week before, he accepted $1 billion from these very same demons in Europe, Macron and, you know, his, his colonial masters, in them, right? To do what? To make sure that black Africans don't go to Europe. Yeah. Okay. And how, and what, what is his whole plan for making sure the very black Africans that he says are coming over? Can you imagine you're black in Africa? You're in Africa and this white Arab is talking about, you know, great replacement theory. Like, what is that? Yeah, come on. You know what I mean? Like, what is that? I can't even see that. Ironically, ironically enough, the Tunisian people stood up against him because of that. That's the right, very same, right. they, took, they stood up against him because of that very mm. same thing he said. Now he's accepting blood money to send them to, to these, these very black Africans to Libya so they, yeah. they can be enslaved by yeah. the war machine that's going on in Libya right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand, right? And, and mind you, Muammar Gaddafi, right? The ex, the former president of Libya. He was, Marcus Gaddafi. Yeah, Muammar. Oh, he Muammar. was the one that was trying to get this this African currency going with the African nation. Yeah, he was trying it. to do that. Right yeah. now, the African current, the African countries, the the sub-Saharan countries are repeating exactly what Muammar Gaddafi was saying because they see what happened to him, they see what happened in Rwanda, they see they see what happened in mm. in in South Africa, and and the the writing is on the wall, right? So now all of Africa is coming together. Who is still twitching and twirling and twerking for Zaddy? Tunisia. Right. But can you just pause a second there? Can you put can you put this idiot's comments on the screen? This fellow craft. I want him to jump on the panel so I can get educated. So one of the things he's put without the West aid, without the West aid, where would USA, Africa yeah. be? USA. Right. And so no 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 because it's a question that needs, in my opinion, it's a question that needs to be addressed. Right. Okay. And we've already discussed it. What does aid bring? 
aid brings debt, right? Mm -hmm. Aid, the also, the, and I did, the, I, I had to write, I had to write, so I, I didn't have to, it's something that I chose to write on when I was, when I was going to do my sports psychology, right? So mm -hmm. I had to do like, you know, the prerequisite courses and stuff like that. And it's just something <laughs> I chose to kind of, like, something that I chose to kind of like look into, you get me, right? And it turned out that, the aid that they're talking about that's being sent is only getting spread out amongst government officials who are then selling right, to make more money, right? And that's a vast majority of it. And mm -hmm. the powers that be that are sending this aid in, 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 in inverted commas, they know this, but they continue to send aid to prop up these same people that are going to go and take it and sell it and that store it in silos and all these kinds of things, right? So it's a great question and it's a question that needs to be answered, right? Where would Africa be without the West eight? Probably, probably, probably 50 years, years ago. Stuff. And maybe not 50 years, maybe 20 years ago. Without without aid from the West, they'd probably be independent maybe a decade or two ago. Probably. Right, and this, the other thing is as well, but the other thing is as well is this, brother, right? This is the thing, right? When when you was growing up, and I know what you're talking about, aid. The aid you're talking about is when you used to hear about Rwanda, you used to hear about Somalia, you used to hear about Ethiopia and them countries, right? But what was the cause of the, the, the famines in those countries? That's white folks. Sorry to say like that. Yeah. It's yeah. white folks. Yeah. against European exactly. powers. That is so why, why did these wars start? The same, the same way that these wars started in Africa since World War II. The same reason. It's, it's been the same since that time. Since, you know, you guys know who Mansa Musa is? Yeah, Mansa we know who that is. Okay, so Mansa Musa is the richest man in history. And he made this trek from from Mali, or the, the kingdom was Mali, but that, it's called Mali, but that region is like Mali, Nigeria, Ghana, like the West African, he owned all of that. And when he when he made this 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 Hajj trip from, from Mali to, to Mecca, right, he had so much gold, so much, and he's just giving it, giving it away, giving it away. And then he's bringing back all the scholars and all the brain power back to West Africa because he got the gold, right? It even caused some of some economies in the the Ottoman Empire to crash because he gave out so much gold. Okay, nobody needs nobody needs money anymore. Okay, so anyways, Mansa Musa he comes back to from his Hajj trip, and then word goes to Europe that there's gold in Africa. Mind you, there's there's not much gold in, in Europe. This is what caused Europeans to go from that that trip. That's what caused Europeans to leave. Europe to go to Africa to look for gold because I started hearing about this. So about they, like, they knew about it before. Yeah, months, and once they that. found out about all this gold, they started planning to make this trip. They make this trip to Europe now, right? And by this time, you know, Mansa Musa he's long dead, right? Now these these Europeans they're coming to Africa and during this time, and the the descendants of Mansa Musa they've done fought each other, and they're, now they're all these warring tribes at this time. All the descendants of of Mansa Musa because they want to fight for their grandfather's gold or their great grandfather's gold now. They come. And all these little sections are saying, oh, we got the wealth, oh, we got the wealth. But what they did was they gifted these same Europeans with slaves. They gifted to them. Because back in these times, right, slavery wasn't this devilish slavery that we see like this Europeans did. It wasn't, it was nothing like that. It's like prisoners of war. So they make these trips back and forth, make these trips back and forth. And then they realize, okay, these people are so distinct from us in their looks, right, that perhaps we can divide them. You know, that's how it all started. This divide and conquer. This whole divide and conquer strategy has was perfected. Or you can imagine perfecting a strategy to keep entire groups of people pressed for centuries. And every 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 generation just built up on that system. That's what they've been doing for the last 300 years, 300, 400 years. OK, just perfecting these systems. Right. So now Africans are saying, well, you guys are coming over here. Right. And you are getting rich of what is underneath our feet, and we can't even get food. That's what all of Africa is saying right now. So when you're asking about aid, right, where would where would the, the Africans be without this Western aid? Probably independent, because that aid was the... the, the aid, the, I mean, if not independent, they'll definitely be self-sufficient at self -sufficient, least as a yes, minimum. Yes, yeah. my point is that Africans were very rich like wealthy so much so that no, europeans, they still are rich. europeans left europe to go to africa to find wealth what was going on in africa during the dark ages of europe what was happening why was the dark ages of europe the dark ages europeans were broke they were broke do you understand they had to leave europe to find the wealth where were they finding it 
Africa, the same Africa that you're sending aid to today. You got there's this book called Confessions of Economic Hitmen. Okay. Yeah, I've heard it's written, of it. It's written by a man named John Perkins. Okay. In this book, okay, this this man, he's he's he is his job, his actual job is economic hitman. What what mm-hmm. does he do in his job? He goes into these so-called third world countries, right, to give them predatory loans from the IMF, from US aid on behalf of these corporations, so that those corporations can now usurp the autonomy and the resources of those countries at a fraction of a cost. Yep. That's his actual job. Okay? Yep. You understand? So what does that tell you? That tells you that these countries are actually rich. But cool. through thievery and deception, they rob and they pillage these countries. You understand? So when you were saying that, that they put in a monetary system and a system of, of controlling finance and money, or what we class as money, which which is obviously governed by by the people, do you get what I'm saying? So they can determine how rich or wealthy you are. Yeah. The, and that's a different world. Obviously, in Africa, they didn't run that system. Do you exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that exactly. kind of like that kind of gave them, you know, inhibited them in that sense. So exactly. yeah, I just want to add and, to that what you just said. And and mind you, all of these, all of these what you call it, monetary systems or economic systems were set up at World War Two for that very purpose. That's right. For that for the very purpose of going in under the guise of what we say aid, send this country aid in mm. order to bankrupt these countries. And from the conditions mentioned in this book, right? Because he does that he did this job. From the conditions of these countries is that they must sell their food security. Hold on, bro. But let's talk about the solution too though. Yeah, okay. All right. Well let me let, let me get let me get into let me finish this part point on and we get into the solutions, right? So part part of so what they are doing now like if all if you look at you're asking why are these these Africans why can't they have food? What were the what were these Africans doing for thousands of years before you know the 19th century? Well, how were they eating? Right? They're eating like anybody else. But what's happening? What's been happening in Africa for the better part of a century is now happening in the West. Have y'all noticed the the pinch in your pockets when you go to the to the grocery store? Yeah. Yes. Have you noticed that? Of course. Yes. Did the food change? Yep. The food had changed. Yeah. No, it didn't change. The yeah. Food did I've, not change. I've, right. It's changed. The, the 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 food changed. The food didn't change. The companies changed. What changed? Exactly. But they're saying that's down to the fuel. Exactly. That's what they say. But they lie. You're talking about some some real demons here. They're demons. Yeah, right? We're getting cheap food now. <laughs> they it's, lie. They we're lie. getting second rate food now. <laughs> like the quality of the food's gone down. If everything's gone down now, and you're paying twice as much.